What's going on guys? Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here and today I'm coming at you with my first place Marincess deck profile that I recently just took to my Cyberstorm Access case tournament. This past weekend we played a large tournament where the prize support was a case of Cyberstorm Access where I did manage to win five boxes of the new set. And yeah, I took Marincess. Of course it is a favorite deck of mine. I love playing it. This tournament was technically, you know, pre-Cyberstorm Access. We couldn't play with the new cards because it was, you know, sneak peek weekend. We didn't play any of the new Cyberstorm access cards at this tournament. However, my deck was actually built for Cyberstorm Access because it's what I've been playing uh, and testing with, so I didn't really change anything. So this deck is Cyberstorm Access ready, and I will be bringing that up. Uh, and one card is a little different that I played at this tournament. But yeah, I'll be mentioning that through the profile. Before we hop into it, I do want to let you guys know, Discord link down below, along with all of my other social media links. Also, I'm trying to hit 15,000 subscribers, so if you do enjoy this type of Yu-Gi-Oh! content and you like what you see here, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out and what I do here on the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this Marincess deck profile. Alright, so as I just said, this deck is Cyberstorm Access ready. Nothing really is going to change too much as far as like standard Marincess. Cyberstorm Access did come with some cards like the new Ice Jade monster that I think that could be pretty good, but those are not played at this tournament, and I'll have probably an updated deck profile post the new ban list when we, whenever that comes, uh, as far as like possible new Marincess cards. But getting into the list I played that got first place, starting off with three Marincess Blue Tang. Obviously, we're going to max out our best starter. Marincess Blue Tang is just one of the cards you really want to open because she gets you so much. She sends an extender from deck to grave, and then when you link her off, she's able to find additional resources, which is super huge. This is obviously very standard and we're going to maximize blue tang. Then we are playing three copies of Marincess Spring Girl, which is again very standard, very obvious. The reason this card is a card you want to maximize is simply because she's the only like true extender for the deck where even if your normal summon gets interrupted by something like Book of Moon uh, and you are able to like send a Marincess monster off of something like Blue Tang, you can keep extending past that Book of Moon. So having a true extender like Marincess Spring Girl is huge. I'm still on three Marincess Pascalis. I absolutely love playing three of this card. I know not everyone does uh, because you obviously don't want to draw multiples, but my thing is like this card is just too important especially going second where your deck needs to play around interrupts like Mirror Jade Banish, Lillipop, uh, Book of Moon, things like that where your deck can actually just lose on normal summon where the deck is most fragile. A card like Pascalis, especially going second, helps you extend through things like that. And then going first, she's fantastic as well for just making a larger board and allowing you to have more extenders without even using their effect. Like you can special Seahorse off this go for her combo, and you still have that seahorse effect for later. So Pascalus is definitely one of my favorites, and I love to play her at three. Another thing about this card post a Cyberstorm Access meta is Ghost Ogre will more than likely be very popular, and this is a card that can play through Ghost Ogre pretty well, you know, because if you activate the effect, sure, if they Ogre it, she's going to be destroyed, but you still have a Marincess body on board, so that's something good to keep in mind. The last Marincess that we are maxing three copies of is, of course, the Marincess Seahorse, which is just another one-card starter that's just, like, full combo. Uh, you definitely want to open with one of your, like, best Marincess monsters, and Seahorse is definitely one of those. She's also just like one of the stronger like extenders in the deck, allowing you to just keep going and push through interruptions. So, yep, maximizing Seahorse is pretty standard. For other Marincess monsters, I am playing two Marincess Mandarin. I believe this is actually a larger count of Mandarin than I was playing before, but essentially I needed more Marincess starters because I did what I said I was gonna do in my last profile and cut Cyanet Mining because that card is just not good. I don't like that card. And I'll sort of explain why maybe when I get to the consistency spells. Uh, but yeah, two Mandarin. She's a very good card. She's one of the only Marincess monsters that actually extends for like free value because like any other Marincess monster that extends like your say you blue slug back your seahorse and then you special seahorse you had to use blue slug to gain a resource and then you had to like use that resource to keep extending. But Mandarin doesn't really do that. She just comes out for free from the graveyard like if you center off blue tank. Uh, and that's very good because it gives you a lot, uh, like, more bodies to play with. And it really helps going second with Zelantis lines as well. So I really enjoy Mandarin and just seeing her, you know, seeing any Marincess monster is still, like, some semblance of combo. So I'm deciding to play two Mandarin. One Basil Lima. This card is actually so good for me every time I play it. I'm still surprised that so many people are not playing Basil Lima. She actually won me a game on Saturday against Trap Tricks where my opponent set Trap Trick Trap Hole Nightmare. 
And I put Basil Lima in the graveyard, so even if he was going to use the trap card to negate one of my effects, it would allow me to keep the body on field. And that's like the biggest time she came up this event, but she wins me a game or two every event I go to with this card, and I absolutely love Basil Lima. And then one Sleepy Maiden, which I took out from my regional list, and I ended up adding her back. Uh, I just really like the card, especially because she's another Marincis Extender with a different name. So like even if you've expended your Seahorse and you've extended your Spring Girl, uh, you can still extend with a card like Sleepy Maiden, and finding it off of something like Blue Tang is very nice. It's just another option that your deck has when you play her. And then most importantly, her Grave Effect is one of the most important things in the deck that you don't have to take advantage of. Like, you can definitely play Marincess without Sleepy Maiden, but I really enjoy having her as an option to, like, reset my engine with Coral Anemone or get a Negate on Aqua Argonaut if I do not have Field Spell. So, obviously, having Sleepy Maiden makes your Blue Tang combo a lot better as well, so... I'm choosing to play her even though by herself she's kind of a brick. Yeah, I, I really enjoy having this card, so I decided to put her back in. For Marincess Spells and Traps, I'm on the very standard one Battle Lotion that you have to play. The two Marincess Dive, which is just so that you don't see too many of it, because once you have one in rotation, you're almost always able to just like loop that one. You really don't want to have multiple of this card as it is once per turn, and it's very searchable. So just two is pretty standard. Uh, and then one Marincess Wave. I still enjoy one wave. Going into Cyberstorm Access, I will mention there is reason to potentially play two of this, even though I really hate playing multiples of Marincess Wave because it can be such a brick. Like, this is my least favorite card in the deck. Yes, it's the most powerful card in the deck, but every time I see it, my hand just feels worse. Like, if you draw it going first and you're able to play it solid, right? But seeing it going second is pretty much a blank, and going first, if you get interrupted, Marincess Wave can also be a blank. So I hate playing multiple of this, but post Cyberstorm Access, there actually is reason to, and that's because Droll and Lockbird is going to be extremely prominent. So if you're going to get drolled after your Angel Search or after Blue Tang ad, you're going to need to like sack into Wave more by either finding this off Blue Tang as like your first search when you're searching with Sea Angel and Blue Tang, or milling it with Spring Girl. So playing multiple copies could come up for that. That will take more testing post like being in Cyberstorm Access for a while. But yeah, just in this list and playing with the, you know, not updated format, just one Marincess Wave. Two Pot of Desires. This card is fantastic. It obviously just gets you two free cards. It's just a very powerful spell and it doesn't really affect you. Even if you banish like your wave and your battle ocean, yeah, it's really unfortunate if you have to activate this early and you do banish an important card, but your deck is totally functional without those. Like you don't need them to win. But more often than not, you're trying to search Battle Ocean and Marincess Wave on your first turn before you activate Desires. But sometimes you just need to activate this card. It's absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, even going into next format with Droll being as popular as it is, I would still play Pot of Desires. It's just that good. One Monster Reborn. This is something I played at my regional list and I decided to keep playing it and it was actually very good. I got nabiru and I was able to Monster Reborn what, like my end board that got nabiru and essentially Nibiru meant nothing, which is sort of what Monster Reborn does is it's just a very powerful extender that allows you to play through Nib, but also keep extending through other hand traps as well. So I kept the Monster Reborn in and it treated me well. I do enjoy playing this card in Marincess, if not just as an answer to Nibiru. That being said though, you know, this is also an amazing card versus things like Ghost Ogre and uh, Cypher Gear Gamma as well. So it really does a lot as far as extending power in the deck. On to my defensive cards and my flex spots. I'm going to start off with three Triple Tactics Talent. This is in pretty much every Marincess list I make. I absolutely love this card in this deck. Now, it does have some downsides in this list, or not even just this list, in Marincess in general compared to other decks, and that's the fact that you can't really steal, like, steal Xyz monsters and then make Zeus with them. That always comes up when I'm playing this card in Marincess, but you can't do it, one, because you're often locked in the water, and two, you can't really fit Zeus even if you wanted to. That being said, this deck gets hand trapped so often, and it's, like, not weak to the low impact, so you're able to really take advantage of that with talents where you can get Ashed or Veilard early and then look at their hand, maybe take a more prominent hand trap like Nibiru, uh, but this card can also, of course, steal things to go for game, which happens all the time. Uh, because you're usually short a little bit of damage and tactics can kind of bridge that gap. And of course, drawing two cards is insanely powerful. Running both talents and desires in the same deck can really create some game states where you're drawing a lot of cards and it always feels so powerful. It, so like you're playing desires, monster reborn, and talents 
Like, it just feels like you're playing a lot of power spells in your Marinces deck, which I really enjoy, and I think Talents is just an insane card. Three, Drolan Lockbird. As I said, I have built this for sort of post-Cyberstorm access and didn't really make too many changes besides one card for the event. Droll is an insane card, both this format and next format, where this card is just able to really hinder plays and sometimes shut decks down entirely. Like, this was very good versus uh, Math Mech that I played. It was very good versus Cash Tier, potentially. Droll is just really strong, and we did have a Dark World player at the tournament, so if I happened to play against Dark World, this card would have been clutched there as well if I happened to draw it. Droll is just a very powerful hand trap, and yeah, I just wanted to maximize it at, at three to have a very blowout go second card. Three, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, nothing too strange here. My Locals is also filled with Branded, and I expected many players from my Locals to be at this tournament, so this was a, a no-brainer, like I was just always going to play Ash. And then the only change between this list and my like Cyberstorm Access fully ready list is I played two Ghost Mourner instead of two Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre is good, but I thought this tournament Mourner would be better for me. For post Cyberstorm Access, you can take this exact list and just replace this card for Ghost Ogre. And it will pretty much be what I've been playing with for the new format. Now, of course, again, the new Ice Jade monster might adjust some ratios if I decide that it's worth playing. Um, but other than that, yeah, this list is totally Cyberstorm Access ready. And Ghost Mourner is even good into next format with Cyberstorm Access, but I think Ghost Ogre is a little better, so I would play those over this. But Ghost Mourner for me at the event was very strong. Three, Infinite Impermanence. This is just a very generically powerful hand trap that we're going to maximize. It does stink to draw off Bubble Reef, but I think it's just overall a little better than Valor, uh, especially because you can draw it as a sixth card. So you can kind of choose which one you want to play there, but I think Imperm is just more solid overall. Uh, and the only reason to really run Valor over it is if you're going for Bubble Reef more often and you really want to draw a hand trap on your opponent's turn. Uh, and then I did play three Nibiru, which is an, a card you can definitely not play for Cyberstorm Axis if you don't want it. Like, I don't know if it's going to be an amazing card next format because of how many outs there are for it. And the fact that, like, Pearly can play around it in general. Uh, but for this event, it was very powerful. I mean, Cash Tier is still in the room, and it really helped me versus Sprite because you draw it and, like, a Mourner or an Imperm or even an Ash Blossom. And it can become very easy to, like, nib your opponent. So, yep, Nibiru is just a solid hand trap, especially because you're so weak to it. Sometimes the best answer to Nibiru is to Nibiru your opponent back. And, yeah, Nibiru was a very solid card at this event for me. That is it for the main deck. On to the extra deck, which I think has actually one really big change from my regional list. Uh, I decided to play the extra deck a little bit different, which I will get to relatively quickly. Uh, we have two Blue Slug. This is very standard and what I play in all my lists. I wish I could fit three, but the extra deck is just too tight. Uh, and of course, in a Cash Tira format, you really are going to want multiples of some cards, like Sea Angel, which we are playing two of, which is just how you're getting to your Marincess spells. Very important. Link one for the deck. Two Coral Anemone, nothing strange here. Again, this is all very standard for what I'm used to playing. This is what you're funneling into almost all the time. And I actually added an old friend back to the deck. I decided to play Marincess Crystal Heart at this event, and I did not play Totally Awesome in Bahamut Shark. Essentially, when I took the Silent Sea Nettles out of my list, uh, as well as just like not going for the line as often, I wasn't making Bahamut Shark before summon five as often as I was before, which made me like less inclined to play that package because it was also taking a lot of spots out of my extra deck. So I went back to Crystal Heart just in case it would come up, which I made it once. It's not something I go for often, but if you open a lot of engine, you can use this to kind of play around Nibiru. It's not great. Uh, and oftentimes you're still gonna get rocked by Nibiru, but th this card is like decent enough playing into it. It's okay, so. I felt fine not playing Toad at this event, and it worked out. I did miss it a couple times, but I decided to play Crystal Heart, and I think either version is still, like, an option. For Link 3s, we were, of course, playing our Coral Triangle, just like the best Marincess card ever. I mean, it's, it's really insane. It just does so much for the deck as far as follow-up and getting your interrupts. And, of course, Marbled Rock, which is sort of like your big engine resetter, and it just gets you a lot of value. Marbled Rock is very good. Uh, and then for Link 4s, we were playing the one Aqua Argonaut, which is the one I prefer making more often than not. Uh, but of course, if you can't get to your field spell or to uh, Sleepy Maiden in Graveyard, you're going to make your Bubble Reef. And also, Bubble Reef is just so insane, being able to, like, extend very... Like, the way she extends is very powerful, because you can bring back, like, Link 3s and Link 2s, you banish off Spring Girl, and then go into something like Zelantis, which is really amazing. So, those are the 11 Marincess monsters I'm maining. For some other Link 2s, we are playing the Splash Mage and the Area. These are just really good utility cards that can come up sometimes. I actually used Area to steal a Gamma Seal, so Area did come up. 
Uh, an area is also good if you're playing against things like Dinosaur Tokens or Ibli, things like that. I mean, Ibli can technically go into Splash Mage as well, uh, but area is just good for clearing things on your board that aren't water. Something like Contact C, for example, uh, area is very good. Even though Contact C isn't popular right now, this, if it ever does get popular, you're kind of forced to play this card. Then I am playing one Zelantis. I would love to play two of this card, but there's no room. This is just like the best go second card in the deck. It's just so powerful. And if you can set up like Zelantis with a co-linked monster and wave, it just feels like unbreakable. So yeah, I really do enjoy the one Zelantis, kind of like the star of the deck. And then I am playing one Stealth Kraken. I feel like you are forced to play this card. He's so good in so many different situations. Like destroying very large Nibiru tokens is also very nice. It works insane with Gozen Match in your side deck. But most importantly, if you get like Dimensional Shifted and you don't have this card in your extra deck, you really get actually nowhere. If you have, like if you get D-Shifted, you really want this in your extra deck so that you can either like Pascalus or have another way to get two level fours on field without Pascalus, which would be having uh, both your field spell and Marincess Dive. And then you can get access to Pascalus, so you really want to make this under D-Shifter, and it's sort of like your backup plan. It's like this deck's Baguska. But yeah, this card is honestly insane, and I love playing it. Now I will go over the side deck that I took to the event. Very standard is going to be 3 Gamma Seal. This card is crazy in this deck, because not only is it just a Kaiju and Alps, like, really annoying threats that you want to deal with, it really bridges the gap to go for OTKs, because he is water. So you, like, give him to your opponent, and then you play, and then you go for Zelantis, you use his effect, and you get your Gamma Seal back, which is just extra damage, uh, and that's very, very good. So Gamma Seal, it, it sort of doubles as a very solid go second card in that respect, and I think it's like a mainstay as far as like a Marantz side deck card. Then I have three Ghost Bell, which was essentially for like Labyrinth, Branded, or most importantly, Math Mech. Ghost Bell just really dominates those matchups, and I actually opened two Ghost Bell against my Math Mech opponent in the last round of Swiss, where I was able to use one on his turn against his Sigma. He was still able to set up uh, Super Factorial, and I used the other uh, Bell on a Super Factorial, and it was just kind of GG there. Uh, so yeah, Ghost Bell is really insane. Two Dark Ruler No More. This card is pretty solid. It's really good against Sprite matchups. I'd play another one if I had space, but I could not find space for a third. So just two Dark Rulers is another card that can help clear boards. Although, more likely than not, this card will actually end up being a 3 of because of Super Heavy Samurai, where this card is just kind of insane. But yeah, in this deck, you can't play something like Kurikara, so Dark Roller kind of is really good there. 3 Cosmic Cyclone for back row matchups and Runic, which, you know, going to a more local event, something like back row removal is very good. And one Harpy's Feather Duster. I didn't play against any back row decks except for Trap Tricks, but they don't really, they're not really a back row deck, so. Uh, these did come in, but they're not, it's not like I played against Labyrinth or Eldritch or anything, so uh, they were pretty good. And then the only go first card in the deck was three goes in match. Obviously we are siding, or we are having Stealth Kragen in our extra deck, so a card like goes in match is even crazier because you can waterlock them. Uh, and that's very strong, and goes in match is just a very solid go first card after you get something like Nibiru. Uh, where you need a very powerful Floodgate to kind of get back into the game next turn. So, yep, goes and match is very solid. And that's going to do it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. Any questions on how Marincess functions post-Cyberstorm Access, or what I think of the Ice Jaded card, what do I think of Adularia, Adularia, June Moon, whatever you want to call her. There's a lot of things going on with Marincess right now post-Cyberstorm Access, so if you are curious what I think of stuff like that, feel free to leave it down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. This has been Aaron from Top Tier Gaming. Bye, YouTube.